All right, looking at the basic idea of elasticity, we could look at this from either side of the market. You can have price elasticity of demand. You can have price elasticity of supply. But right now, we're just going to focus on the demand side of the market. It's a little bit easier to deal with, and this is more of what you're likely to see on the test. So starting with our basic demand curve. Now, a linear demand curve has a constant slope. It does not, however, have a constant elasticity, which is where things get a little bit weird for people who are good at math. So we have to look first at regions of a straight line demand curve. Where is it more likely to be elastic versus inelastic? So we're looking at the idea of elasticity, which is how responsive quantity is to a change in price. Remember, price is your independent variable. It drives quantity changes. So we're talking about responsiveness. How responsive is it? That's how elastic it is. At the midpoint of a straight line demand curve, let's put the midpoint here, that's going to be unit elastic. And I'll explain what that means in just a minute. At prices above the midpoint, your curve is relatively elastic. At prices below the midpoint, your curve is relatively inelastic. Now, how can that be if you're talking about a constant slope? Well, elasticity and slope are not the same thing. Your slope on a demand curve is negative. You don't want to deal with negative elasticities because you're going to get really wacky numbers if you try to do that. So let's say, for example, I'll use one of the ones we were talking about today in class. You're talking about a back dome. Fifty-nine cent pack of gum. You go to the grocery store. You want a fifty-nine cent pack of gum, and you find that the grocery store has raised the price by ten percent. And now it's now a sixty-five cent pack of gum. Is that really going to be enough to deter you from buying a pack of gum? Are you going to say, oh no, I can't buy this gum here, and you're going to drive all over town to save six cents? Probably not. It's cheap. It's relatively cheap. A raise in the price is not going to affect you that much. Okay? It's in the inelastic range of your curve. But what if we're not talking about a pack of gum? What if we're talking about a luxury sports car? Let's say we're talking about a car that costs $90,000. If you are a person in the market for a $90,000 sports car, and you take your big fat checkbook down to the dealer, and find suddenly the price has gone up 10%, you're now talking about a $99,000 sports car, you might be a little more willing to say, uh, you know what, I think I'll shop around a little bit. It's the same 10 cent increase. You didn't react the same way because at the higher end of the scale, that 10% means more to you. That's more elastic. So even on a straight line, we're talking about two different products here, which is not what you would do on one demand curve, but I'm using that just to illustrate the concept. You know, I don't want you to think that we're talking about the demand curve for gum and sports cars because we're not talking about a $90,000 pack of gum. That better be some good gum. It better be amazing. That better be like that gum from Willy Wonka where yeah, it's a whole meal. Seriously. Um, and I better not turn into a blueberry either. Yeah, that'd be bad. All right. So what I want to get across to you is that even on a straight line, you can have different regions of elasticity. Now, what exactly does this mean if you're talking about unit elastic, elastic? When you calculate elasticity, you want to know a percent change. I can't write on that part of the board. Never mind. You're looking at a percent change in quantity driven by a percent.
percent change in price. When you calculate that at the upper section of your curve, if something is in the elastic range, then your elasticity, when you calculate it, is going to be greater than 1. At your point where you are unit elastic, it's going to be equal to 1. And at your point where you are inelastic, it's going to be less than 1. But wait, I told you you can't have negatives. This is not a negative number. It is a decimal. Maybe it's 0.5, maybe it's 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and a half, 0 point whatever. Not a negative. Okay, less than 1, not a negative. Between 0 and 1. Might be another way for you to look at that. So, you know what? even if you're talking about a straight line curve, you have different regions. 